Okay. Okay. So this question, and I think it's a, a very good question. Like, don't I have to make choices in life? I mean, I can't just sit on my pillow and just surrender everything. Surely I have to pay my bills. I have to make uh, decisions. And I'd say that's resolved in the spiritual seeker. Uh, while there's the experience of a me having to make choices um, to do, uh, keep doing the spiritual work until such time as um, keep doing the spiritual work until such time as the idea of a me making choices dissolves. And uh, how this is resolved, because it seems like it's a black and white thing. Either I, make cho I need to make choices or either I'm just gonna sit on this pillow and just observe and cancel and do my course away and forget about the rent, forget about the whole world, forget about everything and that's it, I'm just surrendering. And I think this is resolved um, by understanding levels of spiritual consciousness, where a spiritual seeker is and the context of where they are in their spiritual journey. Because for each, uh, each seeming person, um, the answer is different. I think um, generally, um, you know, like in, shall we say, the early to middle stages, it's, uh, I would definitely recommend, uh, it's also related to the Course in Miracles and magic, you know, employing magic in the world. You know, surely I don't need to take the doctor's pills. I don't need to pay the rent because these are all magical things. Can't just have absolute faith uh, that this will all miraculously get resolved. Surely you have to do something. And I'd say um, until such time as there, one has done the practices and, uh, and uh, transcended a me having to make choices, then it's practical, I would say, to, to work and to say I'm sorry and to do all of these things because uh, one's consciousness isn't yet at the level of the, uh, the absolute or the miraculous or the holy instant. So definitely, you know, to take, the, take the pills, pay the rent, do the work, say sorry, whatever it is, but keep doing the spiritual work. So while there seems to be a chooser, I would say um, choose what's in the interest of the highest good of all concerned. What would God have me do? what would be best for myself and all others. And that helps to align the choice uh, away from just having a purely e ego motive or incentive from just purely coming from the um, individual ego self on a, on a selfish level. So yes, I'm not, I, uh, I wouldn't recommend someone on the first day of spiritual practice, sit on your pillow and don't leave there and just uh, witness everything. And let, but you know, it might be, I mean, uh, there have been some who have had the calling to just sit on a stone uh, or sit under a tree and just sit there and either they're going to be enlightened or the body's going to fall down or something. And actually, I would say that's a spiritual ripeness or a karmic readiness to just have that level of faith to transcend everything within the ego, no matter what. And when that, when that readiness is there, that inner calling is there, to, if you like, surrender and even forget the idea of the chooser and not move, then I'd say that's a, that's a high calling as well. And that is the ripeness. It's called, I call it the final run. It's like, now I'm ready. You know, I'm willing to just sit here. Either I, I get full realization, enlightenment, I go into the holy instant or not, but that's it. And I'd say that actually, usually that's an auspicious thing, but I wouldn't say it's appropriate for everyone. Um, so do uh, go to spiritual groups, have a spiritual guide or mentor or something just to help dis you discern uh, what's the right thing. Okay, I'm going to press stop.